So now that we've settled on what angular position means, now we can move on to angular velocity. Simple definition, how fast around a circle, pretty much. However, like I said, we're really just doing a lot of these kinematics for circular motion now, just like we did for translational. So let's go to our more mathematical definition, which is the rate of change of angular position. with time. So mathematically, we represent um, angular velocity with an omega. Omega, the big O. And that is equal to the rate of change of angular position is just delta theta. And with time means delta t like that. So just like velocity was delta x over delta t, omega is delta theta over delta t. It can be in degrees per second. If you insist on doing degrees, you could change your calculator to radians, and it would be radians per second. And sometimes you'll see it in rev per second, which just means full revolutions, revolutions per second. <clears throat> but really, mathematically, physics, we prefer you get used to radians. Okay. And just like before, with kinematics, we can do it with graphs, and we can do it with equations. So let's go to the graph. If we were going to plot the angular position of Sal as a function of time, well, remember, Sal is undergoing uniform circular motion. It's going through the same little bit of angle with each, uh, with each little amount of time. So if we're going to plot it, it would just be a line. And just like before, the slope of that line would be equal to omega. So there's the graph. And if we want to do it mathematically, same thing. We could take this equation and start taking it apart and say delta theta. What is delta theta? That's the theta you get to minus theta naught. Okay. And then that's equal to omega times delta t equals omega times delta t. And we could just bring that over and remember that delta t is really just t because t naught is always zero and we'd find that theta is theta naught plus omega t. Just like we had x is x naught plus omega t. So just like linear kinematics. In this whole part two course, we're gonna find everything is just like linear kinematics. And finally, let's calculate an omega. Let's calculate the omega for Sal on the clock. Well, let's see. It's delta theta over delta t. So the one thing we know for sure is it goes all the way around in a minute because it's a timer, right? So it's basically a second hand on a clock. So delta theta in that case would be 360 degrees, and delta t would be one minute. So we can do a little bit of conversion to get that in a more normal uh, angular velocity, well, one minute is 60 seconds. Right. So you could see that uh, that would be, what, six degrees per second. But we want to get it to radians because we love radians, right? So we also want to get rid of these degrees and say 360 degrees is two pi radians, like that. And if you multiply all those through, then we would get pi over 20 or 30, pi over 30 radians pi over 30 radians per second. 60, yeah, pi over 30 radians per second is the angular velocity of Sal going around the clock.